based on seating capacity but on the sending capacity. Some people got up and went before the worship was over. Some people were really sent. Joshua Paul here with you and uh, in the last episode I spoke to you about how God wants to talk to you how God longs to hear your voice and how you long 
to hear his voice. Hearing God's voice is not a rocket science. It's very easy. It's more easier to hear and understand God's voice than understanding your own mother tongue. It takes you a long time for you to understand your mother tongue. As a child, you learn a few words, alphabets, and it takes a big process for you to understand your mother's tongue. But not so with the language of God. God is a creator of languages. God's a creator of heaven and earth. And he wants to talk to you. He wants to have a personal experience with you. Christianity is not a religion, my friend. It's a relationship with Father. Every other religion says that they show the way to the Father. But in Christianity, we don't show you the way to God. God himself finds a way to know you in person. He comes in search of you. In religion, we go searching after God, searching after understanding, searching after illumination, enlightenment, searching after salvation. But here, God comes in search of you. You don't have to go to a church to know God. God makes your body his temple. You are the temple of God. You are the church. God lives in your heart. God longs to live in your heart. So in this journey with me, I want you to, you know, gear up, focus. Don't get distracted. Don't be distracted to your phone. Don't get distracted by anybody else. But just as you listen to these words, you will hear the tangible, distinct, clear voice of God ringing in your heart. So in the last episode, I said how God wants to talk to you and God longs to talk to you. And Father introduced Jesus to us and Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit to us. And you can never understand Jesus nor the Father without the Holy Spirit. And in turn, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus and Jesus reveals the Father. That's how the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit they work together. In these episodes, I'm going to teach you how to know God in your heart. As I said earlier, man is a finite being. Your mind is finite. So man is made of spirit, soul, and body. Body is temporary. Maybe 100 to 200 years, we live in a body. We don't own the body. We just possess the body. Man is not the body. Man is a spirit. Please understand what I'm saying. If you want to take it down, take the notes, take notes, or you want to take a written, or you want to record, or you want to hear it again, it's always available for you on the YouTube. But listen to this very carefully. Man is not a body. He's not a soul. Man is a spirit. You're a spirit person. If you need to understand God, you need to understand this. This revelation that I'm giving you, this teaching I'm giving you, you will not get it in any book. You will not get it from any university. You will not get it from any college. No man, no scholastic ability can help you to understand. No philosophy or psychology or any, anything can teach you, any ism can teach you this teaching. It comes only from God and it comes through the Holy Scriptures. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, Yes, may God of peace sanctify you, spirit, soul and body. So the only proof that we have, if I say something, it is from the Bible. If it is not from the Bible, you can easily discard it if, because I'm giving you the scriptures. It says man is spirit, soul and body. Man is not a soul. Man is not a body. Man is spirit, number one. And number two, soul is something that has been given to every human being through which you can understand God or you can live your life. Your soul consists of emotions, will, and mind, which is called intellect, through which you think and you process, you learn and adapt to the environment, your language, ability, your skills, everything is connected to your mind. 
And man is not a body. He lives in a body. You possess a soul, but you live in a body. So man is not a body. Man lives in a body. You know, when someone dies, they say, oh, this man, gentleman passed away. And I said, no, his body is here. The real person passed away. So that means the real person is on the inside. The outside is just the body. So if you understand this, it's easier for you to understand God and hearing God's voice. You cannot understand or hear God with your human ears. You cannot hear God in your human ears. You have to hear God in your heart, in your spirit, in the inside of you. That is called the spirit. So who teaches us about this? It's the Holy Spirit because he was helping the Father to create man. Now, let's look at this verse. I want you to, if you have a Bible with you, I want you to open to the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, I'm going to teach about the person of the Holy Spirit. I told you that he's most misunderstood and least understood. But he is the most, most, most important person in the whole world because he is on planet Earth right now and he is ruling over the planet earth and he is God almighty living on planet earth wants to talk to you now as I told you John the Baptist introduces Jesus and he says these are the words that he spoke Matthew 3rd chapter verse 11 those who repent are baptized with water but there is coming a man after me, who is more powerful than I am. In fact, I am not even worthy enough to pick up his sandals. He will submerge you into union. Amazing translation by Brian Simmons called the Passion Translation. He says he will submerge you into union with the spirit of holiness and with a raging fire. He comes with a winnowing fork in his hands and comes to his threshing floor to sift what is worthless from what is pure. He is ready to sweep out his threshing floor, gather his wheat in his, into his granary. These are the words of John the Baptist. And he says that Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So let, let me explain this to you. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Because Holy Spirit is the only person on earth who can reveal Jesus and the Father. Now, look at the scriptures. Jesus comes to John the Baptist and says, I need to be baptized. He said, why? I should be the one be getting baptized from you. But look, at, let me read it for you. It's so amazing. Jesus left Galilee to come to Jordan to be baptized by John. But when he waded into the water, John resisted him saying, Why are you doing this? I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, yet you come to be baptized by me. Jesus replied, It's only right to do all that God requires. Then John baptizes Jesus. He submerged him into the water. He didn't sprinkle the water on him. He did not take a cup of water and pour on his head he took him down into the water and brought him out of the water he submerged him and how do you know the word of God very clearly says do not follow tradition my friend do not follow what people say do not follow what others say follow the Bible church cannot take you to heaven Christ alone can take you to heaven. As a pastor, I cannot take you to heaven because I did not die for you on the cross. Jesus died for you on the cross. And he alone has the power to forgive your sins. He alone has the power to give you a new life. He alone has the power to make you a new person. He alone has the power to make you like him. He alone has the power to take you to heaven. And he reveals himself through the Holy Word, the Holy Scriptures. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word is God. So God speaks to you 
through the Holy Scripture. I am not telling the Bible is God, but the words that are written in this, which has fire, which has life, these words that come alive as you read, that reveals God to you. That is God factor. Now listen to this. I have my only authority, authenticity from the Bible. It says, then Jesus, then John baptized Jesus, verse 16, it's in black and white, as Jesus rose up out of the water. So up means the opposite of up is down. He went down. Opposite of out is in. He went down into the water and he rose up out of the water. This clearly indicates that if Jesus needed baptism, water baptism, to fulfill righteousness of God, you need to take this water baptism as a mark of obeying that you love Jesus, that you follow Jesus, and that you are hungry to know God. And as you go into the water and come out of the water, these experiences will happen to you. These three experiences, what Jesus experienced, is waiting for you. Now, Jesus rose up out of the water. The heavenly realm opened up over him. The heavenly realm. So we understand there are two realms. One is the earthly realm and there's a heavenly realm. Earthly realm is what you see with your physical eyes. Heavenly realm is what you cannot see with your physical eyes. The invisible realm is more real than the visible realm. I repeat again intentionally. The invisible realm, the realm that you cannot see is more real than the visible realm. The supernatural realm is more important, more real than the natural realm. And the supernatural realm superimposes on the natural realm. So two realms, the earthly realm and the heavenly realm. And the people who are born of the earthly realm cannot understand God. You need to come into the heavenly realm to understand God. How do you enter into the heavenly realm? By being born again of the water, the word and the spirit. So I know that you have a hunger and desire to step into the supernatural realm, into the realm called the heavenly realm, into the super wonderful, glorious place where God lives. Now listen to this. He came, Jesus rose up out of the water, the heavenly realm opened up over him. What do you mean? All along, the heavenly realm was not opened up? No, Jesus was not experiencing the heavenly realm from the birth till he took baptism. He was a normal human being. Like many people say, oh, Jesus, when he was seven years old, he made, turned the water into wine. He ran into the cave and covered it. Or, or he made the, uh, he said, furnitures appear and the furnitures appeared. That's not true, my dear friend. They are all fantasies. They are stories, fables that is only trying to take you away from God. This word of God is the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. You can be free from your bondage. You can be free from your addiction. You can be free from poverty. You can be free from curse. You can be free from sickness. When you hear the word of God, when you listen to the word of God, when you understand the word of God, when you eat the word of God, when you become, when you come alive through the word of God. Now listen to this. Jesus rose up out of the water, the heavenly realm, opened up for him. And he saw the Holy Spirit. The first thing that happens when you step into the heavenly realm is you see the Holy Spirit. He saw the Holy Spirit descend out of the heavens and rest upon him in the form of a dove. He is not a dove. He comes in a form of a dove. Many people think the dove is the Holy Spirit. I'm so sorry. I've seen some pictures in the, in, in the Western countries. They put the picture of a father with an old man with a long white beard. 
and next to him is one young man with a dark beard with his hand like this and that's his and above his head is a small bird flying above his head and they said that's the holy spirit i'm sorry god is not an old man there is no age in heaven for your kind information the reason why they painted him as an old man to for you to understand he is a father and jesus a, a young man because so he can understand you as a young man but actually there is no age in heaven there is no time in heaven these things that are on earth doesn't exist on in heaven heaven is a totally another realm my friend and as you you don't have to die to go to heaven you can live and enjoy heaven many people say when i die i go to heaven you don't have to go to heaven after your death you can bring heaven while you are still alive you can bring heaven down to earth so you don't have to die to go to heaven you can live and enjoy heaven take my word seriously you don't have to die to go to heaven you can live and enjoy heaven on earth so that you don't have to go through hell on earth i know many of you saying oh i go through hell on earth i got problems i got this i got that you don't have to it is a choice but today if you make a choice i don't have to go through hell you can snap out of it you can snap out of it make the old thing disappear like how jesus within a second he went in and came out of the water the old heavenly heavenly realm cascaded upon him opened up over him remember it's not over john the baptist it's not over the other disciples it's not over the whole earth no only on one person called jesus so it is a personal experience just because others are having a heavenly experience doesn't mean you can have an heavenly experience no you need to have a personal experience you have to personally invite jesus as your lord and savior and when he comes into your heart and you obey the word of god by taking immersion submerged into the water and come out the holy spirit will open the new realm for you very simple sometimes he loves you so much that he doesn't have to wait for you to get yourself submerged in the water he knows your heart you know when i was 7 years old this heavenly realm opened up for me when i walked to school my friends in the school will say wow joshua paul we can feel heaven they say we saw angel this is real my friend i'm having a holy bible in my hand they used to call me mr hallelujah because why because i was always thanking god i was worshiping god and in my classroom there was a boy who had wounds from head to toe and he was suffering and i asked jesus jesus why he should suffer does he have to you know change his religion change his name for him to get he said jesus said no i am beyond religion i am beyond faith i am beyond human thinking i can touch him and heal him whether he is a muslim or a hindu or a buddhist or a christian or whoever it is god makes no difference with god there is no partiality god does god is no respecter of person he doesn't see you as a christian or a hindu or a muslim they are all man made religion socrates the great philosopher said religion is a opium of the people people love religion they are addicted to religion god never gave religion religion is a is a is a fake cheap fake substitute the devil offers why because he knows he cannot give you relationship with god he doesn't want you to have relationship with god so if you don't want relationship you can have religion i know what you're thinking if you can snap out of religion snap out of your thinking snap out of what you're going through your curses your problems all you have to do is follow god's word jesus said if you love me obey my teachings i know my friend as you're watching me you love jesus if you love jesus obey his teachings as simple as that let me read this scripture for you three things happened when jesus went into the water came up the heavenly realm was open for him number 2 the holy spirit he saw the holy spirit descend out of the heavens and rest upon him who saw 
It was John the Baptist. His spiritual eyes was opened to see the Holy Spirit descend and rest upon him, not on himself, or not on John the Baptist, but on Jesus. And number three, then suddenly the voice of the Father shouted from the sky saying, This is the Son I love, and my greatest delight is in him. You can have these three experiences. The Bible says while he was praying, I like it in the Gospel of Luke, third chapter, he says, while he was praying, while he was praying, you have a hunger to talk to God. Praying is not closing your eyes and just meditating. No, prayer is talking to God. Much more than talking to God, prayer is listening to God. My friend, today is the day God wants you to have these three experiences. And as we are doing a teaching on the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is the most, most, most amazing person. I'm repeating this so that the hunger is created in your heart. A desire is created in your heart. That desire in your heart is activated. While I'm talking to you, there's something on the inside of you that says, I want to know more about God. You cannot find God in any educational institution. Nobody can teach you. Doctors or the, or the police department or the educational department or the lawyers or, or the pastors or the religious people cannot teach you about God. Only God can teach you, reveal himself to you based on the hunger that you have. As we read in Mark 4.24, it says, how much hunger you have, so much you can understand God. Less hunger less of God. More hunger, more of God. So get hungry. How do you get hungry? How do we know somebody is hungry? You go to the hospital. I used to work in the hospital. I used to ask people, are you feeling hungry? He said, no, I've not got hunger for a month. Why? The body is sick. A sick person can never get hungry. Same thing applies spiritually. If you're spiritually sick, you cannot be hungry for God. But the moment you're hungry for God, that means you're spiritually active you are spiritually receptive and spiritually you are activated these three experiences wait for you as jesus rose up out of the water the heavenly realm opened up number two he saw the holy spirit come upon him and number three he heard the voice of the father if you love jesus and you just say the small prayer after me god will hear you and God will come in search of you. He will find you out. He will hunt you down. He will bless you. He will overflow you with blessings. And your life will be changed forever and ever. Just repeat after me from your heart. If you just say it from your mind, just say it from your mouth, it's of no use. Because Jesus said, these people pray from their lips, but their heart is far away. I want you to pray from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. From the bottom of my heart, I long to know you. I want to hear your voice. Jesus, if you needed this experience, I need this experience. Jesus, for 30 years, you never knew the heavenly realm, but you had a desire for the heavenly realm. On that day when you obeyed the commandment of God and went into the water and came out, I choose to follow you, Lord Jesus. And I want you to open the heavenly realm and I need the Holy Spirit. And I want to hear your voice. If Jesus could hear, Jesus was living as a normal human being. He is our model. I am not your model. I am not the one whom you should follow. Follow Jesus. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook. But that cannot take you to heaven. But if you follow Jesus, that will take you to heaven. So my dear friend, as you said this prayer, I believe God has heard you and he will bring close to you. Keep watching us. Keep watching on the next episode as I unveil Holy Scriptures and God unveils himself to you. God bless you.